Hey there, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another review of another Eddie Murphy film. And this time it is Beverly Hills Cop 2. Underrated sequel. Granted, it was a big hit when it came out, so maybe in that respect it's not underrated. But I say underrated because no one ever talks about the sequel. Whenever they do Eddie Murphy documentaries, it's always one of those films, along with The Golden Child and Metro, that they overlook. Which sucks because... I love The Golden Child, I love Metro, and I love this sequel. Great. Definitely one of my favorite Tony Scott films. Might be my favorite Tony Scott film. That might be the case, because I like The Last Boy Scout. That's up there. I like some of the stuff he did with Denzel. I don't mind True Romance. But if I had to think about it, I would say this is my favorite Tony Scott movie. You know, I, I don't mind Top Gun. I, I definitely love Beverly Hills Cop 2. And what's sad is the only way to get it on Blu-ray is in this pack. Which I think is region free, but don't take my word on it. But I believe it is. Could be wrong though. Sadly, they don't carry the features from the DVD. But yeah, this is right after he did The Golden Child, which was a hit, but it was a box office disappointment. Credits tore him a new one, which I will never understand. Uh, we'll do something special for The Golden Child after I finish these Beverly Hills Cop reviews. So I guess maybe he thought, well, I better go do a sequel since people were disappointed in that one. But Beverly Hills Cop 2, yeah, new director... Tony, Tony Scott had just done Top Gun, which was a huge hit, and Tony Scott loved him as a director. He brought great style, I love the look of his films, the feel of his movies. It definitely brought a style of his own. Like, you watch it, like, that's a Tony Scott film. Love the footage. I thought I remember hearing that Tarantino is a fan of Beverly Hills Cop 2. Could be wrong on that, but I swear I remember hearing that somewhere. It might have been on the True Romance uh, commentary. Could be wrong, but I believe... I believe that's the case. Well, which I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> Credit Tarantino also likes the movie. Because Beverly Hills Cop 2... It does what a sequel should. It definitely pumps up the action. I would say it's a little bit more of an action movie than a comedy, but still the comedy is there, and it works. It's very, very funny. And it's not... I don't think it's a carbon copy of the first one. It still feel like, feels like its own film. A good portion of that is Tony Scott. Eddie Murphy was still on fire. I mean, this is the same year he did his concert film, Eddie Murphy's Raw, which is a very funny... I'll, I'll review that sometime. Very soon. And you have the cast back. John Ashton, Judge Reinhold, Ronnie Cops. That was really nice to see those guys come back. Harold Fultermeyer doing the score again. That was really nice. It's got a good soundtrack. This time you have Shakedown by Bob Seger. Great song. Shakedown, Breakdown, You Busted. I like what they did with the John Ashton and Judge Reinhold characters. I even felt more of their friendship with Axel Foley in this one than the first one. And that's what I like, is that they build up on that in the sequel. Because it's definitely the three of them a lot more in the second film than in the first. I mean, you even show that they've been friends between movies with the picture of them having gone on a fishing trip. So touches like that are nice. Uh, the villains, you have Brigitte Nielsen, who had been in Cobra and Rocky IV. Uh, you have Jurgen Prochnow, who would later be in, in The Mouth of Madness, which is a great John Carpenter film. Das Boot, which I've never seen, but I've heard a lot of things about. You also have Dean Stockwell, which I remember him the most from Quantum Leap. He's one of our villains. Chris Rock has a very brief cameo, kind of like Damon Wayans did in the previous film. 
And when I start with this movie, like, again, the, the look of Tony Scott, the way he has the the colors seem a bit that orange that brightness to it, which again gave it a different feel compared to the first one. I, I love the way it intros with Eddie Murphy, you know, shake down, break down, you busty. Yeah, then he's trying to be cool when he's laughing at himself in the mirror. You still have his boss from the first one in Detroit, still funny as hell. You don't think Axel makes my dick itch. <laughs> I'm going deep, 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 deep undercover. You better take care of that car. No, I, I will eat, drink, shit in the car. No, I'm not going really. to. You, you thought I was going to share the car, but I got, I'm going to get deep, 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 deep under, <laughs> undercover. And like the first film, okay, before I get into that, I'm going all over the place, but I'm excited talking about this. Because when I get to Eddie Murphy's later films, <laughs> I'm not going to be as excited. So I kind of want to be smothered in the goodness of Eddie Murphy in his prime when he was funny and he's using his wit and his comedic talents of his mouth and his brain and his ad-libbing. In this case, when Axel Foley was a wise-ass and would talk himself into and out of situations, which he did not do in Burial's Top 3, that's why, to me, that's Axel Foley in name only. Fuck Burial's Top 3. I'll mention more about that next time. But here, either one, the story, he's undercover, this thing with credit cards. He hears that a buddy of his, Ronnie Cox, from the first film, has been gunned down. And he is hooked up, wired up, but he'll pull through, but he's a big mess. I mean, at that point he was in a coma. Eddie Murphy goes down to Beverly Hills to find out what happened to his buddy. So maybe you say in that aspect it's similar to the first film, because in both instances, either in one, the buddy died, here the buddy was gunned down. But the way the style and the villains and the places they go to, and now that you've established the racial relationship between these characters, that's what gives it a different feel. It makes it feel like a different movie. And we get to know more about especially Judge Reinhold's character, which I love. I love that they go in his house and there's all these plants and there's posters of Ramble 2 and Cobra, which is a nice ref wonderful reference to what the original Bear Hills Cop might have been with Sylvester Stallone. So it's cool they have a Cobra poster. I mean, they have that poster right there. That's really cool. Sorry about that. Had to get this a bit colder. It's a bit too warm. But anyway, yeah, Cobra. This is nice that they have that reference there, having the poster. And the interaction of the characters, where John Ashton is talking to Eddie. It's like, yeah, he's it's a bit strange. And Eddie Murphy goes, yeah, Rose was a bit fucked up. <laughs> I heard that. I know, I was just kidding. And they play off each other so well. And again, Eddie Murphy talking to himself in the situations. Like... Conning his way to getting this building. And he's like, oh, I'm Beverly Hills building inspector. And he steals the house. And he's like, these are wrong plans. These are old plans. What? These are old plans. They don't want they don't want right angles. What? Donut? So they want to live. Who cares? Hey, if they want to live in the donut, let them live in the donut. Okay? These are old plans. Okay, someone's going to be fired. But listen, how about I'll talk to your people, then they'll talk to my people, then they'll talk to their people. You guys take the week off. You clean some of this shit off, though, before you leave? <laughs> or when he pretends to be the Johnny Wishbone Psyche Extraordinaire from the island of St. Croix, uh, Lex and Biddle. It's like kibble and bits, but different. Or later on, when he goes into this gun club, and he has to get in, and he takes uh, Judge Reinhold's vitamins in his bag, and he goes in, and he puts some water on him like he's sweating, and he puts it down from the like, This is, I forget what the hell he said, but some type of explosives. He's going to leave it there. And she's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I, I, hey. 
this is where I'm supposed to be. From point A to point B. I don't go to C. And she's trying to talk him fine, you take it in there. It's like, no, well one would gonna do. But yeah, I got two daughters. I got two, you know, twin daughters. One won't do. And then she gives it a ten. Ten dollars. I have twin daughters. Monique and Unique. <laughs> and then she gives them twenty bucks. It's like it's the same way they found Bootsy. Same way Bootsy got killed. They found twenty pair you know, twenty dollars in a pair of Adidas. <laughs> And he almost sneezes, scares the woman, he's like, we almost got fucked up. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing a shit job relating the jokes, but Eddie Murphy in his prime, he knew how to do that. Hook, line, sinker, man. Again, the, the camaraderie between the three, and even when they, they're breaking into the something, and Eddie Murphy's using a piece of gum, and Judge Rhino goes, can I have a piece? And Eddie goes, this is my last one. Then split it. So he splits it. Then Eddie looks at John Ashton. None for you. Or how they f you find certain things about Judge Reinhold's character of uh, Billy, Billy Rosewood. That he has switchblades. He's got guns at his house. And yeah, like the posters of Cobra Bramble too. Like I was saying before, where uh, well, John Ashton went, Billy kind of strange, isn't he? Yeah, Billy's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I know you heard that. I was just kidding. <laughs> or even later on when their Judge and Eddie are running and he pulls out this gun and Eddie's like, we gotta talk. What are you, Clint Eastwood? Huh? Dirty Rosewood? Just so many fun moments when he first meets Brigitte Nielsen and he stands on his tippy toes to be eye to eye with her and first he goes like now how long does it take to shave those legs? What are you trying to be funny? No I'm just offering my grooming service <laughs> and it was actually before that when she left and he looks at her and goes god damn it's a big bitch <laughs> You would never have a character say that nowadays, which is sad, because that's fucking funny. It's not about her being a woman or being against women. It's about, there's the villain, and he says a funny line. God damn, that's a big bitch. <laughs> there's uh, the, the action scenes, they feel a little bit more... I don't know if I want to say a little bit more violent, but a little bit more stylized. Like when the three of them get shot out and Eddie Murphy's tear is rolling on top of cars and trying to shoot the bad guys. Later on when there's a, a car chase and Billy is driving like this cement truck. It's the best I could find. And that's another good song, Be There by the Pointer Sisters. Are you driving with your eyes open? Or are you, like, using the force? I mean, you even have an appearance of the Playboy Mansion. Hugh, may you rest in peace, Hugh Hefner. Uh, Chris Rock makes a quick, uh, very early appearance. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he'd ever been in a film. This might have been the first thing where he's he parts cars. And the by Hugh Hefner's place, and Chris Rock is like, what the hell is this? And he's like, it's my truck. Just put it next to the limo. And again, he's using his wit to piss off the bad guy. He's not a hot-headed bad cop like he is in Brazil's Cop 3. He goes in to piss off the bad guy to see the bad guy will let his guard down. He's like, Max kills cops for a living. See, we gotta go. Party's over. Max fucked it up for everybody. <laughs> Or another guy that's in this, Gilbert Gottfried. Uh, that's a fun scene when the our three characters uh, talk with Gil Gilbert Gottfried's character. Which I remember from Fort Fairling. Of course, a voice in the anime film Aladdin as Iago. I can never say that name right. <laughs> 
you have the finale in the oil field and bad guys dealing with guns and <sighs> there's one bit where he, Eddie has a gun on the guy. You like rap music? What? I'm from the Rap Coalition of America. You like rap music? Yeah. The how come I don't hear you singing? Well, say yo baby, yo baby, yo, yo baby, yo baby. Now say ow, ow. <laughs> he gets knocked out. Now the shootout happens. Great bit with Judge Rhino gets a bazooka. He took it for his collection. And he's trying to figure out how to use it. And he accidentally sets it off and blows up a truck. And even Eddie Murphy laughs at that. <laughs> I can't ever, I can't do his laugh. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. And at the end, I said this in my review of Beverly Hills Cop, one of the only nitpicks I had with the first Beverly Hills Cop is that John Ash's character didn't, did not really have much to do in the finale. But here, they fixed it, because Eddie shoots Jürgen Pratt now. I like the scene where it's located, like it's dark, it's barely lit. You got like a fan, which I wonder if that was his nod to Ridley Scott, his brother. You know the fan thing. And Brigitte Nelson is ready to kill Eddie, but John Ashton shoots her. There goes women. <laughs> which again, you would not have that in a movie nowadays with things being too PC. And even the ending where throughout the film they've had this asshole uh, chief up their ass. is talking shit and interrupts Judge Ronald John Ashton. And finally they stand up for themselves. And Eddie's reaction is like a proud parent to his kids. You know, John Ash, you know, uh, John, Judge Ronald goes, if you take your head out of your ass, you see we sold the whole damn thing. And then John Ashton's like, kiss my ass. And then Eddie Murphy's like, like, he's a proud parent of these two. And even after, he's like, kiss my ass? You've taken your head out of your ass? Man, more and more you like me every day. Next you'll have afros and big dips. And <laughs> I will never understand why this film got bad mouthed by critics. Like, these are the same critics that praise The Nutty Professor. Which, I rewatched those films again, and I fucking despise those movies. If you like them, teach their own, but when I get to them, they will be big rants, especially the second fucking film, The Clumps, which Roger Ebert gave a positive review to for some reason. May you rest in peace, I don't fucking get it though. Because that's a film you have a giant fucking hamster, CJ hamster shooting turds out of his ass like a shotgun. But you know, Curtis did kind of trash the second film, other than. Roger Eber. But even the first film, the, the first Night Professor, it's a lot of fucking, you know, fart jokes and critics praise that, but they take a shit on Bray Hill's Cop too. I will never It was a bit again, it was a big hit. It, it's weird. It's kinda of like the Karate Kid Part 2. Where the two part two films that were big hits came out around the same time. Not the same year, but around the, the same time. But fans enjoy those two movies. They were huge hits, but they did a bunch of jack shit for releases. Why like, Cry Kid Part 2, I believe, has a Blu-ray. I, I could be wrong, it might not. But it doesn't have any new features. I mean, you could have. And... Like, that's a film. I'd like to review those one day. Cry Kid Part 2 is my favorite of the group. I think I... I forget where I heard it, but I thought, like, Ralph Macchio actually likes Cry Kid Part 2. And then Beno's Cop 2. At one point, Eddie Murphy didn't like it because he dissed it when he was making Beverly Hills Cop 3, saying, oh, Beverly Hills Cop 3 is so much better than Beverly Hills Cop 2. That's before the film came out. So I don't know Eddie's thoughts on Bray Cop 2 now. Maybe he doesn't like it. I don't know. I don't know what his thoughts are. Of course, it's the same guy went on with big fucking Norbit. But yeah, Bray Cop 2, it's funny. It's fast-paced. Never got bored with it. Just like, never got bored with the first film.
I'd probably say the first one is a bit funnier, but the second one is pretty damn funny too. Hmm. I don't know. Do I like this more than the first one? I don't know. After watching it again and thinking about it, I might. I don't know. The two really damn good movies. I don't know. I have to think about that. Hmm. I have to watch it. Yeah. Mario's Cop 2 is a fucking classic. Entertaining. Good music. Good soundtrack. Bob Seger's Shakedown. Be There, The Pointer Sisters. The Axel F. You know, Harold Fultemeyer score. Still solid, just like the first one. The style of Tony Scott. Definitely feels like a Tony Scott film. Great addition to the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. The characters working together. You get even more of the three characters, Eddie, Judge, and John Ashton together. One scene that was deleted that I wish it wasn't was, and you see a little bit of this in the trailer, is them breaking into this this uh, building and they have to bypass these lasers. And I wish that wasn't cut out because you can only see it on the DVD because it is now it's not out on Blu-ray in the U.S. And then if you get this, there's no features on that Blu-ray. Just the first one has features. So you gotta have it on the DVD. That was, I thought that was a pretty good deleted scene. I would have put that back in the movie. I don't think that should have been deleted. I, th I thought it was a fun little scene. So even the delete that deleted scene was pretty cool. And the movie... I, I will say it's an underrated sequel, because no one ever talks about Burning Hills Top 2 when they talk about sequels. You know, they'll talk about Terminator 2. They'll talk about Aliens, which makes sense. You, you should talk about Aliens. But when they talk about great sequels, Burning Hills Top 2 never gets mentioned. It's a damn good sequel. You know, it's like Ramble 2 and Ramble 3 and Predator 2. Those really fucking good sequels that even Rainbow 2 no one talks about nowadays and if it does it gets dawned upon as lame or cheesy really low score on IMDb for some damn reason hey, what do I know right Bale's Cop 2 is a damn classic love the film hilarious Great usage of the characters, even building up upon what was established in the first one. And then part three. Piece of fucking shit, part three. Could have had a great trilogy and you fucked it up. Eddie Murphy fucked it up by not wanting Axel Foley to be funny. John Landis, out of his wheelhouse, not the right guy to direct that kind of film. You don't have John Ashton, you don't have Ronnie Cox, you don't have Harold Fultemeyer doing the music, you don't have Don Simpson and Jared Brecker producing, and they produced the first two. Top 3 is R-rated, but it feels like a fucking PG-13 film. It feels like a tame, neutered film. doesn't feel like it has any edge to it, unlike the first two. The first two felt edgy. The third one feels like a pussy. No, actually, a film like a pussy would be nice, because any guy would like that. This is more like film a fucking turd in a bowl, and no guy wants to feel that. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. And next time, I gotta talk about that piece. Very close, top three. See you guys later.